Erica Gensler embodies the spirit of a true Special Olympics athlete. On and off the track, her dedication to her sport and her teammates is unmatched. I think Erica is always very upbeat. I never see her sad or unhappy. She's a joy and a pleasure to work with. She takes instruction extremely well. She always has from the first day she got there. Somehow or other, she got the nickname Princess. One of her coaches even refers to her as the Princess. <laughs> Erica and her mother, Ruth, are more than just mother and daughter. They're best friends. They sing together. They shop together. They even have endearing nicknames for each other. Erica loves the Golden Girls. I call my mom Margaret. I call my mom uh, Sophia, Ethel, and Bertha. <laughs> and sometimes my aunt calls me Dorothy. I'm like, don't you start calling me Dorothy. Success didn't always come easy for Erica. She faced many hurdles early on in life. Erica was born with mild cognitive disability and cerebral palsy. She's been doing special education ever since and growing uh, leaps and bounds. But Erica has a history that nothing is easy. She's had 10 surgeries for various reasons, various things, but it's been necessary. She battled cancer throughout her 20s and lost her father at 21. It was real difficult. She has gone through a lot more than she should have. But she took it in stride. And she always takes things like that in stride. With encouragement from her mother and coaches, with her endless positivity and determination, Erica always kept her head up. Special Olympics gave her a place to improve herself and her health. Special Olympics definitely helped an awful lot. Erica took her first dive into Special Olympics at age eight, joining a swim team. She was my little fish and certainly enjoyed swimming. So if she could go swim somewhere, she was ready. It's real important for the whole person, physically, mentally, psychologically. They feel better because they've accomplished something and they enjoy it. They enjoy being with their friends. Over the course of her life, Special Olympics provided her with opportunities to create lasting relationships. And one very significant connection. Erica has a special friend, his name is Steve. Uh, he's also on our team, and they've kind of become a couple and do a lot of activities together. Steve's my boyfriend. He's cute, and he can, he can talk to other girls. I've seen him do it. <laughs> Steve and Erica are, uh, they're one of a kind, that's for sure. They met when they were both on the same swim team. We met for special Olympics and I didn't really know him that well and I thought, who is that guy? Who, who is he? He was a ladies man. I was about ready to smack him like this. I had a too many women teasing over me. I said, cut that out, I don't want that. I was like, okay, if you want me bad, then you're just gonna have to chase me. And now I, I caught him. So I have him as a boyfriend. Steve calls her every day, just to chat on the phone. Oh, twice a day, five o'clock and around 10, after his mother goes to bed. <laughs> what we do on the phone, we can still have a conversation with, like a companion. And you can't talk about his gray hair because, oh, he would get mad if I talked about his gray hair. <laughs> her face lights up and then she starts to giggle. As you have noticed that she giggles quite a bit. Happy and excited when I talk to him on the phone. 
I had a throat from, from head to toe. Beyond the friendships and bonds Erica formed, Ruth used Special Olympics as a way to encourage Erica's sense of independence and self-reliance. She volunteers at a retirement center, at her church, and also works at a local Target. So many parents with children with special needs, the child follows them with everything they do, and the child doesn't have their own independence. It's, it's real easy to enable people with special needs. A lot of people feel sorry for them and want to do things for them. Parents always want the best for their kids. They always want to see their kids succeed and, and, and to triumph and to have victories in their life. But I think too many times we, we kind of coddle them and we're afraid to put them in a situation where they really have to grow. Exercises and exercise and, and fitness in general can be a really safe place for that to happen. It's real important not only for the individual, but also for the parents to see the growth in their child. Fitness in general for their kids can be just that. They can really expend some energy, which is always good, and then also set themselves up for that incremental improvement time and time again. And then it will set them up to have bigger and better successes that their parents may have always wanted them to have, but never really knew that they could do it on their own. Special Olympics has been a part of Erica's life for almost three decades. Erica's incremental successes have prepared her for life's future hurdles. My big goal for her is to be living on her own. My life goal is to stay healthy and to work out and make my boyfriend happy. <laughs> I see Erica as growing stronger and more confident and she amazes me for the difficulties that she has had in her life. The loss of her father, the difficulties with her health. She's done very well. Athletes need to be in Special Olympics to build the friendships, to learn the skills involved in being able to participate in the sports. That's their time to shine, and it's important to them. It's important that they get those opportunities to be successful. <laughs>